What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Top Tries, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to do the very next reasonable step in our my best XXX car series, and this time it is the X will be replaced with uncommon. Uncommon. Last time I did the common ones. Now it is uncommon. So let's have a look regarding the uncommon selection. I got 62 uncommon. Interesting, right? 62 uncommon. That is the least amount of cars I have in a tier. If you don't, and I, if you don't think about legendaries. By the way, I got 68 epics. Woohoo! But okay, let's go now into uncommon. I think we should start with 0 to 60. Plymouth GTX, for example, is a good all-rounder. It is a 1968 car. I'm using it when it goes for a quarter mile or something like this. Anything further, I'd rather go towards the Impala. The GTX is actually not bad. 10 IQ points goes to the maximum of them uncommon points. Um, has good peak and power and torque. And you can see here my win ratios definitely more interesting here rather than with a common one which is a little bit more many of you uh, realized or, or like pointed out that win ratio for common cars is not really a good indicator of a car is good or not because uh, when you use it when you use it right you would just win but so many people would just try to beat you when they see that you actually use a common car for something so uh, win ratio 73 percent with 67 races 244 days definitely a car i can recommend you guys if you don't have it yet if you see it definitely keep it then let's just go on 0 to 60 right now a car i found out i found out about just a not so long time ago, it's a Chrysler 300H, which um, has standardized 7 RQ, a good RQ saver there, very good RQ saver. 4.9 seconds, 0 to 60, unfortunately handling sucks really bad, but I didn't even figure that out, I should actually do that while well, we're on it, right? There we go. Max that baby out. 4.9 seconds, 0 to 60, however the top speed is really low, really low. So if you have a 0 to 100 challenge, make sure you're not using this car, otherwise you most likely will get disqualified or losing really bad. Um, however, it's good for rain, it's, it's not too bad, actually let's see what I got here. We got 86% of the win ratio, I only used it for 14 races, 237 days I had this car, but I seriously, I did not realize I had this car for some time, that's for sure. Then obviously the Impala, it's good to even have two of those babies. The Impala is S427, if you can't use the El Camino back in the days, it was always the Impala which you used. Um, 424 peak power, 495 peak torque, 653 days, 340 races, 70% run ratio. Really good. Let's see the second one. 637 days and 76% win ratio. Really, really good. I can highly recommend you this car. More than one. Definitely more than one. Then we have the Chrysler Newport. I mean, do you need it? Do you not need it? Maybe, maybe. But then again, sometimes you might have a Chrysler challenge or whatever. So if you have some slots open, why not? Keeping the Chrysler Newport is not too bad. Um, let's see. I got a 66% win ratio. 90 races, 408 days. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Then another car, which is interesting. Let's see what we have here. Well, we have, for example, the C-Type. The C-Type is not to definitely don't like uh, I don't know, throw this in the garbage because you see like it only has 6.3 no because um, it is actually a pre 1960s car and those are very rare I mean there are not so many out there and this one is not a bad one 6.3 75 on handling obviously since it's pre 1960s you cannot uh, you cannot think about any or any kind of traction control abs there no driving assistance there obviously this is just a wheel four wheels and a wheel and uh steering wheel oh gosh <laughs> i was like what is it what is the word again steering wheel four wheels and a steering wheel and your engine that's all you need for this one so however the the weight is pretty interesting with 868 here 
Uh, what else we have here? 0 to 60, obviously, I mean the Renault Twizy. I must say, when I saw it, uh, when they had the French Renaissance update, and before they had the French Renaissance update, and they had the Top Drive show, when I saw that ride, I was like, oh man, the Twizy. Everybody wants to have it, because everybody knows that the Renault Twizy, the normal one, with standardized, the common one, is really an all-rounder, it's a good ride, everybody had it, especially slalom, anything rainy, really, really good. So everybody got excited, including myself, regarding the Renault Twizy F1. But I even started built up three of those babies. But I must say, I, yeah, I actually thought I'd use it more. You see, 39% win ratio. Here we have 70%, 43 races. I don't know, I kind of expected more of it. I think the the um, the the point that it has slick task destroys it many times, that you can't really use this one for slalom or so. Slick tires really go so bad, except for dry asphalt. Um, but there, don't worry, don't worry. There are some other slalom monsters you can definitely use. Then, uh, what else we have here? The Chevrolet 454 SS. Not too bad of a ride, you can use it as well for, um, since it has a high ground clearance, uh, you can use it for city streets levels and so on. So then similar to that one is the Chevrolet S10 Blazer Extreme with one more RQ point. But look at this one, 82 in handling while the 454 SS only has 73 in handling, even though it's a bit faster. But the S10 is definitely recommendable i can tell you recommend even though i mean the win ratio looks really bad but don't worry don't worry then a car i found out just lately is a chrysler laser xt 6.6 and you can see it 686 in handling and actually let's go there right now let's do the handling part and there we have it chrysler laser xt and what is really really cool is if you look on it it has a ground clearance of medium Looking at the picture, you would not really expect that to have a ground clearance of medium. At least I would not. But 6.686, this one looks like a Dodge. Like the good old Dodge one, which I wish, if you don't know what I mean, my friends. The Dodge Stealth 5587. And here we have 6686, which is not too bad. Absolutely not too bad. I build up two of those babies. I hope I will use them more in the future since I just found out about those cars. Then DS5, man, how many times I'm using DS5. Awesome for any city streets levels and so on. So rain, standardizer guard from 2012. We got traction control, we got ABS, we got everything it needs. And here we go, 478 races with this baby. 78% win ratio. Can highly recommend you guys. The DS5 is a car you want to keep if you want to see it right now. I did a 323 um, upgrade. Then the DS4 was a car I found out a little bit later after the DS5 because now and then I saw people using it and I lost against them. I don't know exactly where it was, if it's City Street, could be City Street or something like this. Um, I think City Street's medium or so. I need to check that again. However, this is not a bad ride. You can see 40 races, 82% of win ratio. It, um, however, it needs one more IQ point. But I can highly recommend you this car. Then the AutoZam AZ1, 8 IQ points. And this one is kind of like if you're disappointed about the Twizy F1, the AutoZam AZ1 is definitely the one you want to keep, even though it doesn't look so strong. I mean, 10.2 on 0 to 60 and 99 top speed, but I tell you, this one goes through the slalom so easily. Really, really enjoy this ride. Um, let's see what we have here for win ratio, only of 57, but don't worry, guys. This car is definitely worth some investment. Um, then, yeah, you see, we have here a few ones which are actually very interesting. For example, I can highlight the Mazda RX-7, 6, 9 and 86. The Mazda RX-7, the other one from 1978, because, because, 7, 5, 85, but standard tires, ladies and gentlemen, standard tires, good for rain. Then another car which I used many times is the Pontiac Fiero, um, 8.70 to 60, 84 in handling. Unfortunately, yeah, ground clearance of low, so make sure that you don't use it for the wrong times. Uh, 
Volkswagen Corrado. I did not really use this car so far, but I really enjoyed the stats. 152 in top speed, 6.4 seconds zero to 60, 84 in handling. Yeah, so then let's have a look uh, regarding some other. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we go, for example, now into four wheel drive. And there we have a couple of cars I can so recommend. The Ford Ranger. My god. It's such an amazing ride. It's really such an amazing ride. Because it has 79 handling, all surface tires, four wheel drive, nine RQ points. Seriously, if you need an RQ saver, this is a car you should have. Maybe even two of those babies. Because let's say you have you have, I don't know, you have a track set where you have three fast tracks and two tracks where you actually need to use uh, let's say you have gravel or something like this and you feel like ah oh, man I don't really have lower Q cars for this one so what you want to do is using those babies two Ford Rangers and then you can go legendary maybe on the 0 to 100 or on the test pole or something like this and really get those amazing points with it I'm telling you the Ford Ranger is an amazing ride I really enjoy it I had it for so such a long time I never really used it until I finally understood that this car is crucial if you want to be successful. 77% win ratio speaking for itself. Then we have a couple of cars here, hmm, I don't know yet. I can tell you the Chevrolet Blazer is a good car to have, it is an off-roader, there are not many off-roaders. I mean we got this one now with the Italian Renaissance update, the Fiat Campanola. Um, another off-roader it has a brother a rare brother I think which is apparently really good and um, I'm keeping it it is actually right now locked and I will actually keep it I will see where we can go with this baby then we got the Subaru Justy four-wheel drive standard tires if you need anything for rain same with the Ford Ranger 8766 standard tires um, I used it many times however but yeah, it's a hit and miss a little bit, a hit and miss ride. I feel like since we spoke about the Ford Ranger, I don't know if the Vauxhall Frontera, Frontera, sorry, um, is it is worth it? Because I don't think it comes anywhere close regarding the handling of the um, of the Ford Ranger. Plus, I mean, let's see this ABS and traction control. Okay, mm -hmm. both have ABS but no traction control. That's interesting. Um, let's see the weight actually 1.5 well, this one has 1.7 <laughs> interesting interesting then let's see something else not four-wheel drive let's see do we have uh, off-roaders we got four off-roaders um, there's one car which we missed out on in the four-wheel drive section it is a Volkswagen country buggy yeah huh? I mean looking at it I definitely I mean I would whew, that's tough it's tough if you look at the Fox one country buggy and you look at the Fiat Campanola but the Fiat Campanola has way less handling the buggy got like six eight points more handling however we got a four-wheel drive against no four-wheel drive and the Fiat Campanola is a bit faster and got four-wheel drive huh difficult difficult then we got the Chevrolet Blazer then the Hummer H1 Oh man, they're all like kind of like on the same section. However, definitely not too bad to keep some of those rides. Um, let's see, anything what I'm missing out, anything what could be interesting. All surface, we got two of you know, those, the four Ranger. I can't wait to actually have a second one of those babies. Uh, slick tires, well, that's probably this. <laughs> yeah, I got enough of those. Um, standard, yeah, all surface, off-road. Uh, the rest is not really that important. I mean one thing what we could look is actually here not handling sorry not handling no no let's actually see the top speed and there you see it, it is a Chevrolet Impala SS with 162. Then we actually got the Mercedes-Benz E-Class from 1994 obviously um, we got ABS at least on this one obviously this one doesn't have ABS as Jaguar C-Type. The Chrysler Sebring is, uh, yeah, it's actually an all-rounder car. 7873 standard tires. It has medium ground clearance. It doesn't actually look like medium ground clearance immediately, but it has medium ground clearance. So another car I could recommend you if you need something, something easy for city streets levels, then the Chrysler Sebring. Let's actually see the time. Mm, I hit and miss a bit. 
But um, since it has such a balanced out uh, stats, 143, 78 and 73, it's not really something except maybe top speed, but the rest is not really like standing out. You know, sometimes you have a car like, uh, if you go here, uh, like this one, like the Chrysler 300H, that you have a car, you know exactly what is the strength. You know, okay, 0 to 60, 4.9 seconds, you can count on that, especially when it's rainy. Beautiful. Uh, but that's it <laughs> then you know like okay woo, once it's going into a turn you're going to have issues so this is the car i'm really using only for like a quarter mile or a zero to 60 chance that's all i use for it however that's where i know where i need to use it and that's why it's useful so ladies and gentlemen do you agree with my list is there anything any car which you use and I did not have, or maybe I, ha I have it and I did not really feel about it yet, or I didn't think about it. Then let me know down below in the comment section. I wish you a pleasant weekend. That was a casual mob.